Speaking generally, the actual practice of the NSA hasn't changed that much. What we learned they were doing then, we've just learned more about how they are doing it now. One of the main things that came out in 2005 and 2006, in part due to another whistleblower, a gentleman named Mark Klein, who worked for AT&T, uh, was that the NSA was basically sitting on top of the domestic, that is the US internet backbone, sucking up all of the data and trying to sort out uh, the communications of bad guys, of terrorists, um, including communications that cross the country, communications from in and out of the country, and communications within the country. Um, and this was being done without the authorization of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, which is the secret court that's supposed to be overseeing that kind of conduct. The main thing that's changed since then is that Congress passed a law in 2008, the FISA Amendments Act, that essentially legalized that vacuum cleaner surveillance, uh, but put it under FISA court supervision. Um, but rarely was it ever spoken of clearly what the NSA was doing. You had people like us at EFF saying, well, wait, you're, you're passing this bill that says, oh, you can do this surveillance targeted foreigners, uh, but trying to warn the public that that actually meant the NSA was going to be getting access to all of our communications in their attempt to target foreigners. Um, and that's what, so we were called crazy for that. We were actually made to be, to look very paranoid for even claiming that the NSA had that kind of access uh, to the internet network. Um, and yet Snowden uh, proved us right and basically allowed us to say, well, we told you so. Um, and now at this point, unlike in 2005, the program is under a bit firmer legal footing because it's being done pursuant to this statute. But we still think that it violates the US Constitution's uh, Fourth Amendment, which requires that searches be reasonable uh, and, and uh, that they uh, only be made pursuant to a warrant based on probable cause. And yet this law uh, authorizes vast programmatic surveillance without any um, specific probable cause and, and without any specific targets. Um, so in a lot of ways, nothing has changed other than the fact that everyone believes us now. Um, and there is some more oversight from the FISA court, although even the FISA court has at times uh, said that the government has violated the law and violated the Constitution in the way it's doing this program. Sadly, the same lawsuit that we brought uh, many years ago is still going. Um, we first brought a lawsuit in 2006 against AT&T specifically because we had this whistleblower evidence about them. That case was killed by Congress when it passed the law in 2008 that immunized the phone companies and updated the surveillance law. So we brought a new case against the NSA alleging the same facts. Um, I, that, if, if you've seen the movie Citizen Four, as people are watching right now, I, I was in that arguing that in that case in front of the appeals court in 2011. That case is still going on now in 2016 with no end in sight uh, based on the additional new information that we have from Snowden. So not only would I think there's a basis to bring a similar lawsuit, we're actually still bringing the same lawsuit about the same conduct. Now just arguing over whether it's constitutional rather than also arguing about whether it's okay under the statute. We're focusing on the Fourth Amendment, or rather EFF is. I don't work there anymore.